Hey, what's up? So a couple of days ago, I was just browsing the Twitter and stumbled on a sponsored tweet, which was about this piece of software, which is pretty amazing because in a nutshell, it's basically a full on operating system in your web browser tab, like nothing else. It's not a, I know, ISO or some virtual machine or virtualization, whatever. It's literally just URL that you open in the tab of your browser, maybe Mozilla, Chrome, whatever. And it is a operating system. And this is how it looks like. They are getting like, it, it looks like very viral because initially when I first discovered this, it was available, no issues at all. Then a couple of days later, I wanted to make a video, but uh, the web page was not available. And right now it looks like that it is available through the registration. Uh, you don't really need to do any verification or anything else just sign up with some email whatever and you will be able to access um, the thing which is a demo uh, just a demo of the of the putter which is the name of this uh, operating system i guess we can call it like that which is open source and the beautiful thing about it is that it's fully uh, self-hostable as well like we can access the demo in the putter.com just to see how it works but I will show you around a little bit and then we'll actually try to deploy it in my Oracle Linux uh, 8 so this is it you just go to the putter.com and in your browser you have a full-on operating system with a terminal you can do like I know LS and there you go this is coming from the username that I used uh, to sign up uh, otherwise as I said like it was not working at all and uh, yeah well at least here in the demo instance most of the commands are turned off as it seems um, tab doesn't work for autocomplete so it's still in the early development and there are many flaws and whatever but it works like you have a terminal and what's really pretty I already did it here but you can just create a new folder, call it uh, my web, whatever. And uh, let's try to sample HTML file. Yeah. No, uh, sample HTML index file. Let's try it like this, simplest possible HTML template yeah this is whatever this should work let's go back to our our putter uh, my web i uh, will create a new html document okay i'll call it index.html i want to edit it can i paste here yes save I guess it's just control save. Let's close this. Supposedly we have an index file for 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 my web folder. And then the beautiful part is that I just right click on my web and say publish as a website. And there we go. We have a subdomain of a fancy chicken, whatever that we can change. But uh, let's go like this fancy chicken. And there we go. This is an example paragraph. Anything in the body tag will appear, blah, 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 blah. So we just created and published our first web page. And we can do the same with an application. We can download, we can archive and explore pictures, videos, recorder, camera, code, draw whatever it it really is an operating system so let's get to the github i uh, will close this so we don't need it anymore as i said it is fully open source um you can see it's very active like hours ago there are some changes because as i said i don't know why exactly but uh, in the recent days it uh, became quite viral so there are already almost eighteen thousand. Uh, stars in a github at least for the moment of making this video and 1.5 thousand forks of this repository uh, which is crazy uh, all of the code is published as uh, agpl uh, 3.0 license which means that uh, as it is you can download use it do whatever what you want with it but if you do some code modifications then uh, you need to publish the code as well so you cannot keep it for your own 
and we'll definitely not go through all of the files here, but basically the internet operating system, free, open source, and self-hostable. And this is, yeah, all the files that you can get here featured in the Hacker News, featured on a Hacker News here as well. So Putter is advanced open source internet operating system designed to be feature rich, exceptionally fast and highly extensible. It can be used to build remote desktop environments or, or serve as an interface for cloud storage services, remote servers, web hosting platforms platforms and more. Um, getting started, after reading the section, please proceed to self-hosting and configuration below. So this is what we're actually going to do right now. And uh, as you can see here, I have my Oracle Linux 8 uh, hosted on the uh, virtual box. And uh, there are multiple ways how you can deploy it, like you can use NPM uh, what, by just cloning the repository of uh, Putter and then NPM install, NPM start. I don't usually do it. Uh, uh, I just like Docker. And that's it. So basically what we'll be doing, we'll be doing the Docker Compose. I find it easiest and simplest for me. So the only thing that we need to do, uh, follow documentation. I This time I did it previously before recording the video because, hey, uh, self-hosting as a Docker container operating system that runs in a browser tab is not a common thing you do, right? So first thing first, we need to create a directory where the putter will store a configuration file and also all the data. So as it usually goes with the Docker containers, you run the container, but all the required data is somewhere on your storage so that if something happens with the, uh, with the container, you don't lose all your configuration and data. Uh, then we need to set up the permissions so that it is ac accessible, download the compose file, uh, I actually already had it, so whatever. I will use the one that I downloaded before. Uh, here we can see the config uh, for the compose. It's very simple, like container name, putter, yeah, image, this one, official uh, port 4100. Uh, we can set up the environment variables. I actually will not do that for the sake of the testing. Uh, here are the volumes that we just created, uh, health checks, yeah, so there is also a health check running. So that's good. Uh, and the last command, we can use the docker compose minus F then to the YAML file and up minus D. So this will take, I don't know, uh, less than a minute because I finally have a fiber uh, internet connection. So it's pretty good. So let me just uh, entertain you for a second. And uh, that's basically the only thing that we need to do uh, for being able to access it. But we will still need to edit. Uh, since I'm hosting it on a virtual machine here uh, in my Oracle box, but I will not be able to access the graphic user interface. So open the Chrome or whatever from my Linux machine. I will be doing that from my Windows box on which I'm actually recording the video. That's why we'll also need to do a little bit of the configuration, but let's wait. So cool, this is done. Uh, Docker PS, uh, see container is running. Let's leave it as it is for now. We will need it a little bit later. Uh, so self-hosting, cool. See the configuration for the next steps. So the only thing that we need to do as far as I remember, like I've tested, but I actually messed up things a little bit. Let's hope that I remember everything correctly. We need to do the domain configuration and domain configuration, depending like from which device you will be trying to open the putter um, operating system browser tab right now. Uh, in my case, as you can see, it is uh, Windows. So I need to open this file. See Windows System 32 drivers, Etsy and hosts. And here I have it. I already filled in. So these are the two entries that you need to write. Um, basically, this is pointing to my virtual machine internal IP private IP address 192.168.56.101 uh, two domains putter.local and API putter.local otherwise it's not going to work you cannot just use the IP address you can but uh, you'll have just a blank screen and without anything so let's 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 copy and paste this one and I think that it's that it's it I think that it's all, uh, but let's try like uh, putter.local and oops, uh, no, not this, lot local 4100. And uh, 
there we go. We access the browser, but it's still empty. I think we just need to refresh the page because we actually need to get to the uh, login page. And this is not a login page. Yeah, so the thing is that we'll not get... Ah, oh, there we go. So see, I don't know what, what why this is happening, but uh, I had the same problem initially. Like you need to do at least a couple of refreshes to actually get to the uh, the login screen. Uh, but here it's still not, not showing up. Uh, let's try to refresh for the last time. And still we're not getting anything so whatever let's use the incognito tab and for the email or username somewhere here in the somewhere here in 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 the github documentation we should be able to find um, whatever to be honest like it is somewhere here i don't remember where exactly but somewhere here you will find the username but anyways you will not find the password so to get a password and the username you can go back to the cli and type in docker logs and find the container id copy paste it and there we go here in the end we will get the default user uh, default user is this and we will also find the password here is the password put it let's go back here password login and it doesn't work uh, put our local host for one zero zero dot slash log and this is likely to a configuration issue okay so somehow here in the background i got it to work like uh, i was actually browsing around in incognito tabs and then put it back here in my initial page where you remember like a couple of minutes ago i was not able to get the login screen this one and there was an error message like hey your session is time out so you need to log in again so i said okay let me log in again and right now i can use the default user uh, and again from the, with the password from the from the logs of the docker container and here we go now you can enter I don't know if I did anything or there's just some issues because as I said, like it's in very, very early stage of development. So there could be some mistakes and it's even, it even was re written somewhere that uh, self-hosting hosted version of Putter is currently in alpha stage and should not be used in the production yet. So there might be some problems happening. But basically for sake of testing, I had both uh, local host and also the local. And in the config file of the of the putter, I've changed the domain from the putter.localhost to the putter.local. I'm not sure if any of that is the reason for why it suddenly works, but uh, it does, right? And uh, here we can see same stuff. And let's check if actually we have more, uh, more permissions to uh, the CLI, if the terminal will actually work looks like it does not um okay so nevertheless like it's an active development and hopefully when the video is out there's going to be uh, wider functionality at least we can create new folder whatever and also publish it as a website which is still a very good feature um What's the use case for the putter? Putter can be used as alternative to Dropbox, Google Drive, and so on. Remote desktop environment, platform for building and hosting websites. Um, yeah, YG query, does it run putter? Uh, Tesla, uh, model three, does it run putter? Not now. It does, putter runs on the Tesla. And I think this is the guy who is actually running the, uh, the sponsored ad. So apparently the putter is created by him and here is the hey putter itself so i hope that you like it and and go try it out it's very interesting and we'll definitely see you in the next videos thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe see you later and bye bye